Yeah, the question that I had for Deborah, that, and I'll ask you, Sandy, as well. Uh, when you st first started doing the ribbons, and you kind of like, if red, you kind of felt a certain way. As the days or weeks go on, did you start to feel the same feelings for that color? Like, did you see it? Does that make sense? Like, if yeah. you if, if love every time you felt red, was it always the same feeling that you felt? with that color or did it switch for you? No, Kay gave us a chart as to which color meant what. And so at first I used that chart to kind of guide me and help me a little bit. And then I like, if I pulled red and red meant power, fire, passion, I like felt into that and felt what I could feel and then went from that and headed in that direction. Um, but then I didn't use the chart anymore. And then just what did I feel from that color? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, go on. So like, um, purple it is regal um power and but to me um i i felt like uh because it's regal and to me regal is like the royal family and princess so sometimes even though it's um like it princess I get like that the person acts like a princess or can act a different way it's sometimes it takes me in a different direction yeah for personality traits I guess and I I get all of that with purple but I also get spiritual with purple as well religious and spiritual in that way but um it, it you know like the chart that i gave sandy is a starting point that's all that is it's it's just to get you going like a jump off and then as you m move through it you do what like how deborah's doing she's just picking up the ribbon and that's how one of my you know like if i have this blue ribbon you know, my one mentor said, just hold the ribbon, see what comes. The other mentor said, let me give you a starting point. And then continue holding the ribbon and add to it, add to the starting point. So that means that if I start with blue, that, you know, this is this color blue, it kind of looks purple though, doesn't it? But it's blue, sky blue. So this kind of blue brings in a person might have be calm and um, cool kind of thing. It's also the color of mediumship. If it has anything to do with mediumship, I see it wrapped around the throat area. I see the color come in like this. Um, me for me personally, for me personally. So I know that if this color is wrapped around the throat area, I know that that person has potential to become a medium if they choose to and if they work at it. So do I have that color? <laughs> I think I've already told you that, haven't I? No. Are we going to get a demonstration then? Um, yeah, I could do a demonstration. For Nicole and Nicole can be the guinea pig, right? <laughs> Nicole, you're already a medium. So if you're, if you're, uh, yeah. Step um, into it. So this is a little bit different. Like if I was going to give a reading to somebody about anything and anything in general, not an aura, because if I was doing an aura reading to see what somebody's path is or personality or whatever. 
I look at the aura, the colors around the aura on that day. This might be a little bit different, but what I would do is I'd take these ribbons and drop them in their lap. And then I would say, close your eyes, pull up a ribbon. So um, I'm going to look up. I'm not looking down. And Nicole, tell me when to stop. Stop. <laughs> I have a bunch of ribbons in my hand. All right, hang on. Let me spread them out. It's interesting because four of them are very similar in color. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pull from this group that I have. There's five of them. Tell me when to stop. Stop. And this is what I pulled. And the other, the, the other, so I pulled this one. So it's a bright green. The other one that I pulled was slightly less, not quite as bright, and yellow. Weird. White. Those were clumped together. So this is um, a really vibrant, bright green. So as I start, I'm just holding this in my hand. I'm playing with it as I link in there with you. That's all I'm doing. So as I'm linking in here, holding on to this. It's interesting because I'm picking up on um, the lighter shade that's within this color, which would be a white or a lighter shade which I actually did have a white, actually. Um, the first thing that I'm getting here with you is there's a, there's a playfulness about you. And I, I want to go to learning and new things that are coming into your life. That's where I wanna wanna go with this color. And there's this playfulness with you that you you look at things that are new coming in and it you you find that playfulness within you and you embrace it. Like a child would embrace something new that they're learning and they're having fun with it. That's what I'm feeling here with this color with you and the new things that are coming into your life that you're taking it on like a child would of, oh my gosh, it's a shiny, a shiny new object. Let me get that object. It's pretty. Let me explore that. That's the feeling that I'm getting there. But there's an innocence there. There's a pureness there as well that you really, um, I want to go into your spiritual aspects there, that you really want to do this and you want to do it well and you want to do it in the right way. That's quite important to you. But again, there's this innocence, childlike innocence of, I can't believe I'm getting to do this. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Look over there, another shiny object. Let me grab it and see what that's all about. Innocence. Tell me when to stop. I'm going to pull another one. Stop. So it's a very uh, light shade of pink. And immediately when I pull this up, Again, this is laden with that whiteness, the white and the pureness and the innocence again. But this also brings out a mother link here as well, a softness, a gentleness as well. Are you a mother? No. And this is about your mother. And she must have had an, inf an influence in your life. Yes or no? Um, to be positive. Oh, okay. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> she must have had an influence. <laughs> I said, "Are you tricking me?" <laughs> no, otherwise, this I wouldn't. This wouldn't. This card or color wouldn't have come up. So she must have played a role there in your life. Now, for better or for worse, but when I pull this color in in um, aspects of you, you have a gentleness about you you have a nurturing aspect of you that of which we normally relate to a mother's love it's a nurturing whether your mother was that way or with you or not or if you are not a mother and perhaps in the future become a mother you already have that natural instinct and ability there <laughs> I'm just going quiet. <laughs> I'll leave that right there with you. Okay? Thank you. Um, but that's that's what you do. That was wonderful to watch. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, Thanks. Nicole, for yeah, being the yeah. guinea pig. So if um, so, if you don't have the sitter in your presence, like you said, they would pick a if ribbon. Yeah, you if they're in your presence, you just put the ribbons in their lap, tell them to close their eyes, and just have them draw. You know, I normally say choose three, you know, pull out three cards and I or colors, and I start um I start with the first one they pulled. But if it's online like so much that we do, you would just do what you did to me and just yeah. say, tell me when to stop. I took them and I just dropped them in front of me. And I, I'm just, I was doing this when I said, pick a color. Let's pick one more. Pick one more real quick. So for people that aren't clairvoyant or it does is not working like mine is not working a whole lot right now. How do how can the ribbons um, work in communication with spirit? Does that make sense? Or is it mainly just for the sitter? Would that be more of a psychic thing to do the ribbons? Or can you use the ribbons on getting information with spirit? I use them mostly when I'm working with on a psychic level or on a, on a to read somebody's aura. That's when I mostly use them. But that's not to say that I could have a spirit communicator come in and cover me in a color, bathe me in a color. You see color when you are working. So you could easily, um, you know, you could even talk with your team and just say, how can we use color? If I learn and start learning the meanings of color, how can we use that in the work that we do? How could we use that? So um, I'm, I'm just going to experiment and see what happens. I'm going to ask some spirit to come in and, and, share, and, and just bring me in a color and see if I can give that spirit communicator, um, pull out the essence of who they are with color oh. i don't know if it's gonna work i've never done this before so let's just see let's just see with the intent so i'm just gonna set that intent for a communicator to come in and use color with me so that i can get a sense of who they are so i got a lady here right now Let's see what she's going to bring me right away. I get the feeling that she would be mother. Um, and she's giving me another color right now. Uh, I feel with this, this lady that there would have been I feel she would have been in her personality, I feel that she would have been one that would have been able to keep her cool in in challenging situations. I feel that she would have had a bit of calmness there with her. 
I also feel with this this lady, uh, she would have. I feel she would have had a very sharp mind. She's bringing in another color. I feel she would have had a very sharp mind. Actually, really smart lady. Um, She had a creative side to her, but she also had a very structured side to her as well. And uh, all of this is coming from colors. So, so far she has shown me pink. She has shown me um, a blue blue. And I've also seen yellow with her. So I know that she would have been... Um, very in uh, very much an intellect very smart she would have had to have been very structured i want to go with the work that she did she would have had to have been um very structured everything had to be a certain way that's the feeling that i'm getting there i also feel that she would have had a creative side that's going back to the blue so structure organization were important to her in her work that comes from yellow but now as I go back to the blue, I feel that there would have been a creative side to her. She could have been crafty. She could have been one um, I don't know. I even get a sense that she may have at some point in her lifetime done like dance or theater, but creative arts in some way creating things as well Does anybody understand this and I'm not sure at this point if she is your mother or if you are her mother I think maybe it could be my mother until you got to the creative arts or dance. Yeah, but Brooke, um, I, I, I am drawn to you, Brooke. Uh, I was going to take, I can take it. You can take all of that? Yeah. Yeah, and because uh, Sandy, I do... It, would this be your daughter? Because she feels younger. Or is it your mother? My mother. That's your mother, but Brooke. Oh, it Brooke. was my, my mother, but she had a thing about age. She was very young for her age, even when she was old. Okay. Um... I, I, Sandy, I do think I'm, I'm drawn to Brooke. I've been drawn to Brooke since I started. So I do feel this could be for Brooke. Um, but you would understand, um, she was really sharp. Yeah. Really, really smart lady. And a very mm -hmm. even methodical in her thoughts thinking at times and mm -hmm. had to be very precise uh with things as well does that all make sense to you yep yeah would you also understand mm -hmm. with your your mother that it, she, she gives me the, this is a new color coming in here now. I'm seeing red. I'm seeing red. And as I move into that, that red there, um, I do feel that there were aspects of her life that she was very passionate about. There were mm -hmm. things in her life that, that she, that were really, you know, she put a lot of energy towards a lot of passion for with that um i also feel that she she could take on that leadership role as well that she could take control when she wanted to or needed to does that make sense as well yes 
I also feel with her that she was the kind of person that what we had to be she had to be careful with her um, demeanor I feel that um, she, there were times where she could become I want to go back to I was seeing red she could see red mm -hmm. in that phrase does that make sense to you that her temper could get um, the best of her if she wasn't careful does that make sense it makes sense I never saw it but I it makes sense okay yeah and um, I, I'm just going to leave it, leave it there. Um, and this doesn't have anything to do with color here, but would your mother have had a very upright, straight posture? Yes. Because yeah, that's how I feel. Like, straighten your bones, put your shoulder back. <laughs> she kind of reminds it's that funny she reminds me of a teacher that I had I had two I had the mother and the daughter <laughs> and the daughter and the granddaughter was in, in my class <laughs> but they all walked like this very straight back and always had their shoulders and the chest out yeah but I'll just leave it leave it there and all of that was done with color I didn't that see, was amazing I didn't that was see any images didn't hear anything it was all done through color you know it's so, really fun Kay just I, it, I, to give you some feedback my mother was an interior designer oh, and that's the creative. worked with color yeah you know, that's that it. was one of her passions she was, that was, she was perfect to come in and bring me color <laughs> yeah and and her methodical preciseness was when I mean, I remember when she she did the design work for the for all the homes in a subdivision, a large subdivision, and when she do jobs for clients, I mean, she 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 was an AID designer. She went to Parsons, you know, top of the line in her field, bright, you know, the whole thing, yeah. and she knew the right way to do things. And this is Hawaii, and she'd come from New York City, right? And so she would go crazy when she would, you know, the, the local painters, she'd find they'd paint the top of doors, the scene, of right. doors, you know, so then they don't, they don't shut, you know, there's too much stuff on the top, you know, I mean, she was very precise, methodical, and, you know, you're dealing with numbers and everything else when you're like that. She yeah. was passionate about that. Then she got passionate in doing grapho analysis, you know, handwriting, astrology, um, writing she she wrote she was a travel editor she was passionate about traveling you know all of those things and it and when she was younger she was an arthur murray dance instructor when she lived in new york there we go so i mean you absolutely nailed it and she she did prize youth you know i mean it was a little embarrassing my brother hid from her once because she was like in her 70s wearing a bikini at the beach he didn't want his friends to see her you know, I mean, you know, I mean, this was my mother, you know, <laughs> but, um, and she had a good figure. I mean, you know, she, she was fine. Just don't have the same muscle tone in your seventies that you do when you're 15, <laughs> but she had, she had excellent posture to did her exercises. I mean, you, 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 you nailed her just absolutely. That was incredible. Yeah. And and you didn't get any images or anything else. That's just mind boggling. All, all I saw was color coming in. So I'd see a color come in and I'd talk and a color would come in and I'd talk and a color would come in. By the way, she was the first woman. She got listed in the what, American, you know, women's deal. You know, for, she was the first, first person to ever decorate the interior of a submarine. Oh. Oh, wow. You know, in Hawaii, you have a lot of submariners and everything right. like that. And she, she had a lot of friends because she played golf all the time. And a lot of them were in the military coming yeah. through. And somehow she persuaded, persuaded some big brass to let her decorate the inside. Because she said, that, no, those people, those men are going to be out in, their, in this, you know, underwater for nine months. You know, you, they need color. And, you yeah. know, color has huge effects. So it's very cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah, so she she came through. All right, so. All
Nicole, you need to get busy because <laughs> you see color a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you can do it mediumistically. Who knew? <laughs> So all I did was set my intent, you know, all, that's all I did. I said, send me someone and, and, and let's work with color today. Yeah. So note to self. Okay. If you, for whatever reason, if, if you ever feel the need or you get stuck, ask for color because color is, is, something that I love working with color. I like color all around me. As y'all can see in my room, I have color everywhere. I like color. So now I can just send me a color, please. I don't know who you are. I don't know nothing about you. Send me a color. <laughs> I'm drawing blanks. <laughs> yeah. I think that's just such a unique, I don't know. Um, I love color and so since I see color even if I don't get an image in my mind's eye I'll still get like shades of color mm -hmm. and it just seems like real playful and fun so that's why I guess I'm drawn to it because I'm not drawn to do cards I mean I have a couple oracle decks but it's not like I don't feel passionate about it I don't feel connected to it yeah. So for some reason, I don't know even how we started on this color conversation, but it just makes me so giddy and excited to try it. <laughs> yeah. Well, get you some ribbons and, and do what Deborah's doing. Just start because you're going to find, you know, like we talked last week about, you know, there's so many different books and they all have different uh, ideas of what colors mean. And but you'll find like you're gonna find that red across the board in all these different books you'll see that red um you'll feel passion you might feel f the f fiery temper that sort of thing um you'll feel love it, it can be associated with love you're gonna find the same you're going to find certain ones that overlap in all the different books. I'd hold on to those. Those are the ones I'd hold on to, those those meanings. But then then you'll also find, like, you know, these are two different colors of green. So this reading was would be different than what if I had pulled this reading with you. Color. So Deborah, do you just uh, write down, like, did you start when you first got the ribbons? Did you, I guess you would hold on to them, feel them intuitively, just what you felt. And did you just kind of keep a journal or some sort of chart to see if the next time that you picked that color, if you felt that way or so, how did you keep it organized? Because I'm very organized and I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd remember what I got last week with one shade versus well I think if that's what you're called to do you should do it I wasn't I feel that um because I do it through feeling it's evoking repeated now a few times the same types of emotions so I feel like it's being integrated yeah. that this is what I'm getting with it. I'm so interested. I think you, you'll recall maybe I said at the outset, I wasn't doing too well with blue. I was getting nothing. And then Kay, I heard you say blue for you is calmness. And that's probably why I wasn't getting anything. Like it was just like nothing. <laughs> blue is a lot of things, but calm is one that you'll find across the books calm for blue Interesting. but yeah. creativity and 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 creativity can come in many forms so it can be um you know creating something such as brooks mom it could be crafting it could be um dancing it could be theater it can be singing anything in the arts 
would fall into blue blue like sky blue um a, a creativity you know but also writing is creativity um expression any expression wow. any kind of expression uh speaking all of those things and and are from sky blue blue is also interesting enough um that color blue sky blue is the color of mediumship for me so um it, it can you know but then you have you know indigo navy blue it's different it's going to be different it's more this is more vibrant it's not near as calm as a sky blue or a baby blue it's going to be different so this is baby blue so the vibrations change and you get different things but um uh, navy blue indigo this color blue uh to me is about spiritually it's about um uh, in past intuition psychic abilities that sort of thing so you can use your colors to read a person based off of their spiritual path physical emotional spiritual soul well spiritual i did, did i say spiritual twice so spiritual physical emotional all those aspects can come into play with color. And then I guess if you start to, um, like Deborah's starting to feel the same feelings with a certain color. So I guess even you could play a game with yourself. And once you get to that point, close your eyes, randomly pick a color and see if you feel the same thing yeah. that you so there's lots of ways I feel like my brain's working. <laughs> yeah. My and, teacher brain. And I will say this, Nicole, when I first started, I bought a blank book. And I just I took, you know, the te the, the just just the teacher in me. So you don't have to do it. But I just clipped a little bit off of each one of my ribbons and used it for a tab in the book. And I allowed several pages for each color and I tabbed it like that and I, I would write down what I was getting each time I held it. So if I if I got something, if, if I'd already written it down, I wouldn't write it again, but I would add anything new that came. Did you write it down from a reading or just if you were just holding it yourself holding it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just now looking at, I just now noticed that you guys are writing over here. <laughs> oh, that's Deborah's too. Yes, Deborah. Yeah. Uh, uh, if the cards don't resonate with you, Nicole, definitely. And that's what I did because cards haven't always resonated with me either. Although all morning long, I've been given readings using cards, <laughs> which is why I keep calling these cards. <laughs> um, but um, when I first started using like Oracle cards, it was always the colors that I was drawn to. And I would give readings based off the colors in the cards as well. Yeah, so. Any other questions? Two, two, two Q&As consumed with color. I think I do need to do a color workshop. <laughs> I'm so glad you're saying that because I was actually going to ask that if you were planning to do one because I know it's probably been a couple of years since you've had one, isn't it? Uh, for color? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It'd be fun. I'd love to do that. Andy got it in the mentorship. 
I remember, I remember Jean took um, a color workshop with you and I didn't at the time, I was still doing my other training. Yeah, so, yeah. But... I, I was, I did offer like a four week one and I got a little more into it because you can do, use color for healing. There's a lot of things you can use color for, but if I do a, a one-off workshop, it'll be uh, like a down and dirty. What what how can we use this in in terms of psychic readings and mediumship and auras not so much about healing or any of those aspects let's see i, I think everybody's just absorbing the whole idea of how how large color plays you know um a role yeah in in, in how we feel about everything and it's such a it, it it's such a subtle yeah. thing if you're not yeah. conscious of it and then once you become conscious of it nicole like now that you're aware of it you probably aren't like once you see it it can't be unseen type of thing <laughs> you know yeah so, and, and that's it's, cool it's, that that you work with color and it makes you feel things that's cool really super cool i've but, never had I've, I've never had color opened up like you did last time and today and I so appreciate it, you know, because it seems like people say, oh, well, these chakras are associated with this or, you know, these colors or these moods or, you know, and it's pretty much, I hate to say one dimensional, but it's like A equals B or, you know, this, it, it's very on one level. And I love right. the, the richness that's unfolded as yeah. you demo, demonstrated and explained more. So, Nicole, I'm so glad you asked that question this morning. But you you also have to look at the different shades um, mm -hmm. and and like um, you know like this is a very vibrant yellow here versus this one's more of a pastel kind of yellow. So you look at the different shades and then sometimes you'll get you'll see colors and they've got um, like a, a a murkiness to them and that's always meaning there's there's something there that's that's we need to pay attention to here could be a health issue um it could be like if you take this you know well that's not the one vibrant red like a real true red like this and if you start seeing that it looks like it's got brown coming into it a lot of times that's a health thing you, you start noticing, okay, what, what is that? And red also sometimes can, uh, especially if you've got some brown mixed in and it's looking kind of like a muddy red, there could be some uh, mental uh, issues going on there that they're struggling with. Um, when you look at like navy blue, the indigo blue, you have to be, uh, you, you, there's two, well, in all colors, there's, there's, you know, a spectrum of things that it can mean. Navy blue, you have to, those people have to be mindful that sometimes, because a lot of them are empathic, they have to be careful because they can fall into a depression. And so you, you, you can see both ends of the spectrum, whereas on the other end of that navy blue, you see wonderful things like they're empathic. They know things without knowing how they know. There's, they can be very intuitive and even psychic, which are all wonderful things. But then there's the other aspects that we have to be aware, aware of. So it, it's, it can get you know, the more you go into it, the more you discover things. And then you'll have colors like um, blue. Blue has an aspect of yellow in it and an aspect of green in it because they come together. Those two colors blended together makes blue. So you have to look at that aspect. So when I'm seeing blue, I know that there's an aspect of yellow there. There's an aspect of a green there. It's underlying. It may not be as 
as strong as the blue, but it's there. Make sense? Same with orange. So like with orange, I tend to see orange, believe it or not, it's a healing color. Soft orange is really good for healing for infections, but like a pastel -y kind of color of orange. But orange has yellow and red in there, so we have to put play with those colors as well. And I got a little OCD thing going with me and my ribbons. I don't like them when they're all bunched up, so I'm putting them all together in a nice, neat thing because <laughs> I can't put them back into the bag if they're all bunched up. May, may I just add something? Think about when you go to your closet or your drawer to pick clothing for the day. Yes. How, like, don't, doesn't color come into it? Like, Absolutely. I know, and I'm admiring. You look fantastic in red, Kay. And oh, I, I definitely think it suits you. I am so uncomfortable wearing red. I almost never will wear it. It, and it's it's one of my favorite colors to wear. Right. It's red. Yeah. And, you know, consciously, maybe I, I ought to force myself to wear it and step well, into that power that I associate with it that I write down. Red is, like, red is the color of blood. It, it is the color of life when you think about it. So it's very energetic. So if your mood or your energy levels are dragging, surround yourself in red. If you need, to, red is a power color as well. So um, if, you are, if you kind of stand up and do a speech, wear red. Have some red on somewhere, bring in your power. What do you see politicians a lot of times when they're doing on, when they're on the trail, they have a red tie if they're a, a man so it's it's a you use that color to bring that energy to you right if you've got a meeting with your ex you might want to put some blue on just to calm your butt down <laughs> keep, keep it zen <laughs> you right you know and so i use color a lot in the classroom I never, I didn't, even though red is one of my, fa I love color, so I can't say it's my only favorite color because I have many, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't decorate my class in red because it brings energy. Kids have enough energy, they don't need me to add to it, so I never used red, but I would bring in a lot of blue to help bring the calmness. I'd bring yellow because yellow is the color of the mind. And so I'd bring, I'd bring yellow into the classroom to, to bring that learning energy into it. But yeah, I did definitely use that. If you've got a child at home that's, that's uh, having trouble sleeping, they can't fall asleep, what colors are in the room? If you've got red, take it out. Put some blues in there, soft blues. Bring some soft blues in there. Mm -hmm. If you have a child who's super, super active, same thing. Surround them with some blues. Bring some calm. I have a question. Um, so on a certain color, there is gonna, I am gonna find a spectrum of things. Like you said, um, like navy could mean this or you could go down the other spectrum and it could mean this for me um does that just come with time where where do i that, like for the spirit or the sitter like where on the spectrum should i go it, as far as the readings comes with psychic oh that's when you have to bring in the psychic or like when i was working with brooks mom I, I immediately saw the blue coming in and so it was blue blue and and so um, I, I immediately knew that this lady was creative in some way 
but I needed to know how. So I moved into it on a psychic level, feeling, well, not with her, I wasn't psychic. It was more mediumistic, but I'm still blending to find out what aspect of the blue fits with you. If it's a living person, you're going to be blending in the same way, but not mediumistically, but psychically. What works with you? So you have to, to see. And, and, and not all the things that you feel about a color will, will show themselves in every person. It may be just one or two aspects of that color that relate to the person that you are reading. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and yellow brings joy. It's definitely, it's the color of sunshine, joy, energy as well. Um, have you noticed or, um, like Brooke was talking about chakras. So if I start kind of researching it, do you take your mind out of the chakra colors? Like, so we all know that the green is the heart chakra and that comes with a certain set of emotions. Does that it correlate at all to the ribbon colors or is that your choice or? Well, for me, green is the color of the heart. Um, for me, green is healing. It's a healing color, um, new newness so depending on where i see the green coming in where around the body is the green can play a role in what the meaning of if it's a healer i always see green just shooting from the palms of the hands i always know if i see that that person's a healer so do you correlate the chakra colors to your ribbon colors I don't pay any no. attention to the chakra okay. colors. Okay. I, I don't. I couldn't even tell you what books say about the chakra colors. Okay. I don't, I don't even know. Um, yeah. Don't know. I, I would think that they would probably overlap in some way, though. I, it just makes sense that they would in some way. Yeah. I remember once I met a guy and we were, it was in a meditation circle or something and we're just sitting there talking after the meditation. I was one running the meditation so I was like fully in my power when I was doing it and when, we're, when it was all done, I was sitting next to him and I just looked at him and I just said, you're a healer. And he kind of looked at me oddly and he goes yes and I said like in a major way you are a big healer I see just tons of green coming from your hands and he goes I'm an ER doctor <laughs> and I went there you go <laughs> there we go yeah so good Great discussion, guys. Really good discussion. Okay. Oh, Deborah had to leave. Yeah. Yeah, we do work with the chakras when you're healing and stuff, but um, I don't pay any attention to them. I mean, you can, you can actually do chakra readings. I've done them too. And, and I'm... I am using the color now that I think about it. I do use the meanings of the colors of the chakras. I sure do. But not everybody sees the colors of the chakras in the same way. Some of the chakras, they, they talk about, um, uh, I, I understand chakra colors. I, I use green also, as well as pink, you know, and in some uh, methodologies with regards to chakra, um, they have like, they have different chakras that aren't included on the main seven. Right, absolutely. There are additional ones and they all have their own 
um, you know, specific uh, shades and things like yeah. that. So, yeah. but I, I know people who see the main, I mean, the, the, the seven main ones that we all talk about, mm -hmm. but doesn't see them in the same shades or the same colors as what all the books say. Because all the books are pretty much on the same page there, mm -hmm. on the colors of the chakras. But not everybody sees them that way, and that's okay. That's okay. That would be, I would be curious to go, well, what do you see? Because, you know, what what does that come from because it seems to be maybe it seems to be related to the type of healing that you do that you get connected to the colors or oh, you may you not even be a healer right well don't i think what we do is healing anyway as mediums you know well it is it's a form of healing but yeah. um yeah yeah cool. all right guys great discussion thank you Kay. great class thank you very very much yeah. It's been great. Nice to see you again, Nicole. You always ask so many interesting questions. You really are a catalyst in this uh, in this Q and A. It's really super fun. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. The thoughts never end. The overthinking. The thoughts. <laughs> well, no, well, you know, you you want to you want to get inside something and take it apart. <laughs> I just it's want to know. Child. It's that child that wants to take it all apart. It's shiny and fun. <laughs> I want to know everything about everything in life, not it's even great. just mediumship, <laughs> just everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the kid that was like, why? But why? But why? <laughs> you know, those kids that just always ask the why. That's me. <laughs> the next why. Mm -hmm. Cynthia is. You know, she does. She don't want to admit it, but she's she's pretty good at using colors. So I don't know. I might be here. Thanks, Sandy, for sharing your <laughs> thanks for sharing your experience too. Well, Nicole cracks me up because <laughs> she thinks that she's new and not very good at this, and maybe she's not a medium and. Yeah, we we all know somebody like that, don't we, Kay? We do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't ever practice with anybody, so that's why that's you practiced with me. Well, yeah, a few times, but I'm just very shy, which is hard to believe. But I just get nervous, so I don't ever practice. Like face group is full of people. Do you want to practice? Do you want to exchange? And I just feel. Like, I just don't want to disappoint myself or someone else. So I haven't gone there yet. Yeah, but you have to just remember that everybody is working towards practice. You know, it's all practice right. when you're reaching out to somebody on Facebook. They're practicing too. They're, they, their goals may be different than your goals, but who cares? Your goals are always moving. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. For, all right. I hope I'm saying that right, Donna. Um, and I'll see you guys next. I may not have it next week, y'all, because I may have to have a different meeting. So um, I'll post. I'll post and let you know. Thank you. Right. Okay. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. Bye. Um, we just need to let... Uh, um, Gino. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Do you need a break, honey? I need to go potty for sure. Okay. Okay. I'll text Jean and let her know we're getting ready to log on. Do you want to take a 15? Do you need, you know, Time do you want to go get a snack? No, I had lunch right before I did this. Oh. Normally I wait and eat afterwards, but. Right. The nice I job on a full stomach. I was, I'm impressed then. <laughs> It's Taco Tuesday, girl. Had to have some tacos. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, don't get me go. Don't get me started. All right, I'll, I'll see you in about fifteen. Okay. Okay. Bye.